Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick Daniels, and today I'm going to show you a technique to drawing and shading noses. If you found this video on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course I teach on traditional drawing that I've created for beginners, how to draw from beginner to master. It's available online on demand, so if you'd like to watch a preview of the course, just click the link below and it will take you to my site. For this exercise, you're going to need light, medium, dark, and white charcoal pencils, a tordion, a blending stick, and a kneaded eraser. You'll also need a pencil and a detail eraser. For those of you watching this video on YouTube, for a full list of supplies, please visit my course. You can watch the supply list for free. Just click the link below this video. For the rest of you, welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to show you an easy, classical approach to drawing the nose. For this exercise, we'll be working from a printed photo reference. So before we begin, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can go to www.beginnertomaster.com and download a printable photo reference. And if you're watching this on Udemy or the Beginner to Master website, then download the file Noses Full Size from the course curriculum. I'll be drawing on a sheet of gray toned paper. Be sure to prepare yours by cutting it to the exact same size as your photo reference. I'm going to begin drawing perimeter lines using a 2B lead pencil because it's easiest to erase. I'll place the rest of my tools up here so you can see what I'm using as I progress. I also want to quickly point out that I have two tordions. One is for dark charcoal, the other is for light. One last item some of you may need for this exercise is a ruler. If you're a beginner, be sure to use this to take a measurement for the first line of each of the noses. This way, you can use it if you need a hand with any lines, or to double check your work as you progress. But in order for that technique to work, you must draw your first line using a measurement, or your drawing won't be placed precisely, and every line you draw after that will be some degree off. If you're not sure how to use the measurement line technique, please visit my course to learn this approach. In my opinion, it's one of the most powerful training techniques there is for learning to draw, so if you're a complete beginner, it's a real game changer. The first thing I do when beginning a drawing, especially one that has some very vague outlines, is to look for angles specifically ones that are parallel to the sides of my paper, because that will help me draw them perfectly vertically or horizontally. Ideally, I want to draw a box around my subject, but it's not always that simple, like in the case of noses. So if I can't find any vertical or horizontal angles, the next thing I look for is a way to divide my subject in half, the same way we did with the lip drawing exercise. So, when it comes to noses, instead of starting with a box, I find it's best to begin by building a triangular framework around them using perimeter lines. The only way to do that is by estimating the outer angles using everything from wrinkles in the nose to the side of the nostril, and even those lines that come out from around the mouth to help you. Again, be sure to draw this first angle using a measurement. I'll demonstrate by drawing this one for those of you watching this on YouTube who don't know how to take a measurement line or draw a perimeter line. The process is quick and easy. Simply place your ruler along the angle you want to draw. In this case, it's around the perimeter of the lines I found in the nose. Remember not to attempt to measure around soft shadows. Use the hardest lines and core shadows you can find for this. Then draw a line right on your reference. You'll see two spots where your line touches the margins of your paper. So next, place your ruler up against the photo and take a measurement by making a dot right on your ruler. Make sure your ruler is flush with the left side of your paper. Then transfer the dot by bringing the ruler over to your drawing and placing that dot in the same spot along the top margin. Then do the same with the dot on the bottom of your printout and transfer it to your drawing. Then connect those dots to give yourself your first angle. Remember, this is a training exercise. This technique is designed to help you double check your lines after you draw them. So from this point onward, after drawing each line, check it with a measurement.
But again, for it to work, your paper and photo reference have to be the exact same size. This next angle can be a little tricky to define because the nose doesn't really have an edge or much of a shadow on this side. All the more reason to draw one on your reference. This will help you define the size of your subject. Don't worry if your angle is a bit different than mine here. As long as you draw the line on your reference and reproduce that same angle in your drawing, it will work. Notice I chose to draw this line on the inside of that shadow the laugh line makes around the mouth. Doing that will help me place it later. And again, my objective here was to get the angle of the nostril. And when you're ready, transfer that line. The next angle can be a horizontal line that goes across the bottom of the nose. All that matters here is that the line is parallel with the bottom of the page. Now that I have my subject size and outermost parameters defined, I can start adding some more specific angles, like this one that the bottom and side of the nostril creates. This angle will be helpful because it's going to give me triangles here and here, which will help me double check my work. I'll just quickly transfer that line. And if you're drawing these angles freehand without measurement lines, be sure to look for this triangle that should be created by these lines intersecting. I'll do this angle along the left nostril next. Again, moderate learners should be drawing these lines freehand, then double checking them with a measurement. No two noses are going to look the same or have the same angles, and the circumstances and lighting will almost always be different. So the best way to be able to draw anything you want is to learn how to look for angles and practice estimating them, and learn how to use the elements in the subject or environment like shadows to your advantage. That's what this exercise will begin teaching you, and what my course focuses on real-life drawing situations, and how to think like an artist. Again, if you're drawing this freehand, these lines should meet here in the middle to create an arrow. Okay, as always, we're working from the outline inward, so with the perimeter lines drawn, I can begin adding interior lines. This takes some observation on a subject with so few hard lines and angles, but they're there. What I see when I look at this image is a shadow on both sides of the nostrils. They're symmetrical and almost make a horizontal line, which is helpful to break the subject up into smaller shapes. And if you use the lines you already have, look how easy this line is to place. It's parallel with the line at the bottom of the nose and intersects the lines on the left and right, where these lines intersect to make an X, making a triangle this size. And the right side is even easier because it lands exactly on this intersection. And as you know from the earlier exercises, if you know where a line begins and ends, all you have to do is connect the dots. I'll show you what I mean using my ruler to create the line I would normally visualize in my mind. I look for what lines up and where lines would intersect, make a mark for myself, and draw a straight line connecting the two dots. Now, once I have that line, I can see that this shadow comes up a bit above it and the one on the right a bit below it, and that's how I'm going to draw and place those shadow shapes accurately. The line is also going to help me place those two white highlights on the tip of the nose later as well, so this one access line really is a helpful one. I'll transfer my line. Again, I'm just using measurement lines to make this go faster and make sure my lines are all perfectly precise so the beginners watching this don't get lost. Okay, back to drawing the basic angles of the interior shapes. 
I see a defined angle here along the edge of this shadow on the nostril. It looks almost perfectly vertical, so compare it to your left margin and make them parallel. Drawing these lines should be starting to get easier because you have so many intersecting lines creating all of these shapes to help you. Now I can estimate this distance up from this line to give me the top of the shadow. Again, right now I'm not looking at this image, I'm looking at the distances between the lines. And that shape touches the bottom most of these wrinkles. All I'm doing here is building the basic structure of the nose out of simple straight lines. And now for this bottom one. I can see where it begins, right along that left perimeter line, and where it ends, at the top of this shadow I just outlined. So now all I need is the angle. I'll use the usual angle estimating trick. If you count, there are three dark lines here that create the effect of the wrinkles. All of them are parallel, so once you get the first angle in, the rest will line up to it. All you have to do is estimate the distance between them. One, two, three. And don't forget to look for the distances of each line. This top one is longer than the others. It's light, but it almost extends to the top cross section of the triangle. Okay, great, that's it. The basic structure has been built. It's just the building blocks made up of straight lines. So next, I'll begin adding curves to those lines. I'll start with this shadow. Look for how it curves right above this measurement line. I know that right here in this corner of the intersection is where the bottom of the nostril will curve. It's very small, so should be manageable. I'll add the perimeter lines in post-production in case it's hard to see the ones I draw on the photo reference. From there, I know the bottom of the nose follows this line down. I can see my angle is a little off because this triangle should have been below this line. But that's okay. This system is so precise that it's okay to be a little off. As long as your angles and distances are close, it's very forgiving. As long as the bottom of the nose lands flat up against this line. Next, for the angle of the bottom of the nose, look for where the nostril curves up above this line. Estimate how far down the line it begins and ends. Look for where it lands in comparison to this vertical line. It should be just to the left of it. Add a line for the cast shadow. And I know where it ends, right here at the bottom. And once you know where a line begins and ends, the rest is easy. Now all you have to do is connect those dots with a curve. I'm going to get rid of my lines for now so you can see what I'm doing beneath them. Next, I want to draw the line at the base of the nostril and this shadow that comes down from it. Look for where it begins and what it lines up with. It's parallel with the perimeter line and just a bit beneath it. Then this shadow starts right about here, just a short distance away from that vertical line next to it. And it's an almost vertical line as well. It's just slightly angled down to the right. Look for how far down it goes past that bottom perimeter line. Next, there's another horizontal line parallel to the perimeter line above it. Easy enough. And this final angle is already drawn as a perimeter line. Great. Step back, observe, and compare it to the photo reference. Compare one line at a time. Are the angles and distances the same? If not, that's okay. Look for what's off and make an adjustment. Next, I want to draw this curve. And the way to place that is to look for where it's going. It turns into this line, which is parallel with the line beneath it. Now I have a starting point and an end point, so I can draw the curve. Once I get here, I'm looking for how this curve and nostril interact with this perimeter line. Look for where this curve intersects with this line, right here. That gives you an endpoint. Then look for where the bottom curves below it. Then notice how the nostril curves outside this perimeter line right in the corner. 
Look for this small triangle it creates with those perimeter lines. That's how you'll know your curve is correct, as well as the one above it. And it should connect to the perimeter line. There really isn't any other information on this side, so let's stop there for now. Next, let's observe what's happening to create this nostril. If you look closely, you'll see it's just a thin sliver of a dark shape. To help you draw it, look for where it touches the perimeter line, and it should be on the same angle. It should also line up with the bottom of the nostril on the left side to create symmetry. My line here is too dark, so I'll quickly erase it. Next, I want to get this last curve that goes below the perimeter line, the bottom of the nostril, for lack of a better term. Just look for where it juts out past this line. That's all you'll need to draw. Great, we're almost done with the line art step of the process. Remember to take a moment to step back and observe. Are there any lines or curves in our map that have been left out? I see a curve here on the left that the fill light makes on the side of the nose. It's just a curve here that dips below the line we drew earlier. Then the outline of the shadow comes down to about here and curves out to the right, and more or less connects to the nostril on the right. Nature is beautiful in that way. Its curves have such an easy flow to them. It's our job to capture that. I'm also going to give myself a line for this fill light that runs along the bottom rim of the nose. Remember, this is a relief map we're drawing, and that's where a shadow ends, so it needs an outline. This is a reflected fill light coming into this side of the nose, filling in the shadow. There's even another line here if you wanted to break this shadow up even more into smaller planes. Can you see that? For those of you watching this on YouTube, these lighting techniques and terminologies are covered in an earlier lesson in the full course. I also give a tutorial on the best lighting for portrait drawing and figure drawing to create form and volume. Okay, finally, I'll place this line for the outside of the mouth. I'll begin by estimating the distance over from the side of the nose to the very top of the nostril. Next, I need to get an estimate of this angle. Notice it's almost parallel to the perimeter line. Then look for how long it is. So I'm asking myself questions like, how far down does it go? Does it line up with any landmarks? It looks like it just about lines up with the top of the nostril. So now I know where it begins and where it ends. Again, normally I would just be visualizing this line, but I wanna show you what goes on in my mind while I'm drawing. Remember, these are all practice techniques. With practice, you will eventually need fewer of these perimeter lines, and you'll rely more and more on your visualization skills to do their job. This isn't a defined line, it's actually a diffused shadow with a soft edge. And the line I'm drawing is the inside of the line of the shadow shape. Now I'll estimate how wide the shadow is and draw the right side of the outline, which starts thicker up top and curves into a point at the bottom. From the top of that line, I can see that there are some wrinkles on this side of the nose. To draw them, I'll begin by looking for symmetry. As always, nature has a balance to it, so this top wrinkle lines up with the wrinkle I drew on the left. Now I can look for how that line creates a triangular shape with my perimeter line. As always, while I'm drawing this, I'm asking myself questions like, how does that wrinkle interact with the perimeter line? How far past it does it go? After this wrinkle, there's another one below it. And another wrinkle that extrudes from that. I'm just drawing these lines one at a time and working my way down. I'm not making anything up. I'm keeping count and handling each one individually. The process seems like it takes longer when I'm explaining it because that's the nature of a demonstration. I have to slow every movement down and describe each thought I'm having because that's the best way to learn anything physical. But once you get the hang of the process, it'll only take a few minutes to do something like this. When you're ready, step back, observe, and compare and make any adjustments to your drawing that you see. Once your line art looks right, you can begin erasing the perimeter lines. As I erase them, I'll occasionally find a shape that I want to complete, like this shadow on top. It just needs a line above that top one to complete the outline of the shadow shape. The line is almost parallel with the one on top, just a bit more vertical. 
and they connect with this curve. The shadow vignettes off up top, so there's no need for an outline. That looks good, I'll continue erasing. I'm noticing that there's a shadow here that I missed. I'll just draw it in freehand. There's no need to draw framework for it because there's so much surrounding information. The angle on the bottom is just a continuation of the angle of the nostril. And you may want to draw two outlines, one for the core of the shadow and one for where its soft edges end. That looks good. I'll continue erasing. With the perimeter lines erased, I'm left with just my line art. So the next step is to manage my line weight. I'm going to draw a light outline for that lighter cast shadow. It's just this one angle really, and that should be parallel to at least two other lines right near it, so use the information around you to help. Next, I'll draw a light outline around these two highlights. The first one on the left is easy. It's touching this shadow right in the middle of the curve, so there's a contact point to help me place it. But the main highlight is floating, so I'll look around it for landmarks it lines up with. For example, its right side ends where the nostril begins, so if I were to place a vertical line right beside it, I would have a line for where it ends. And it looks like its left side ends right in the middle of the nose, so a center access line there would help me estimate that spot. Remember, vertical lines are easy because they're parallel with the margins of your paper. That's why I'm holding my pencil up to the edge and bringing it over. And that visualization is really meant to be done in your mind. The bottom is resting on this line we drew earlier that cuts across the nose. Even though it's been erased, there should still be some trace of it left. That's all you'll need. Then all you have to do is estimate its height using the information you've established, which should be manageable. Drawing this highlight is a perfect microcosm of the process of perimeter lines. All I did here is draw a box around that highlight using simple logic based on the placement of the features around it. Now, simply erase this box, but not all the way. Leave yourself a very light outline, just enough to barely see it, and simply draw an oval inside that box. Again, you don't have to do all of these steps when drawing a nose for the rest of your life. Most of these estimates can be done in your mind. The objective of this exercise is to teach you to think like an artist. I want to teach you the mental process, and the first step is to see it done longhand, so to speak one step at a time. The more you hear me repeat these steps, the more it will stick and become second nature to you. Step back and compare your drawing to the photo reference one last time. Make any adjustments you see and let's move on to the shading step. The next step in the process is shading. I'll begin with a light charcoal. The reason for that is because if you look closely at the values in the nose, you'll find that there are only mid-tones and light tones. The only darks are the nostrils and some parts of the core shadows. So you're going to want to use a light touch while shading. Be sure to start light and build each value up, comparing it to your reference to match the tones as you progress. If you'd like to do a practice exercise for this process, or more importantly, to train your eye to see and be able to reproduce the full range of values accurately, please visit my course and do the 10 value grayscale and shading exercises. They will teach you the core fundamentals of shading. It's just way too much to explain in this demonstration. Okay, let's get started. Working from left to right, I'll begin by filling in the most dominant planes with a flat value. Build your tones up gradually, there's no rush. First, see how the lightest tone looks. Look at the shape of the shadow you're filling in. Ask yourself if it looks right or if the shape is off. You should constantly be examining and comparing these shapes as you draw and shade. 
Sometimes the line art looks good, but once it's shaded in, you notice it's a bit too wide or too high. A drawing isn't finished until you frame it. It's meant to constantly be adjusted. I'll switch to a medium charcoal for this shadow. Remember, there should be no hard lines. There aren't any in the reference, so you don't want to add them in your drawing, or it will look like a cartoon. I'll shade in this nostril because it's a good landmark to have, and it adds some contrast and volume, which will help me see the nose as three-dimensional. I'm using a scumbling technique for a few reasons. First, because these are such small shapes. Using a hatching motion would end up going outside of the delicate framework and look sloppy. Next, because the nose is right in the middle of a person's face. One of the cardinal rules of drawing a portrait is that the nose and the eyes should be the sharpest and most in-focus features on the subject. So, I often use a more controlled manner of shading when approaching them. Be mindful when you get to this part beneath the nostril. You should be shading around that reflected light that's creating a rim around the bottom of the nose. So, in order to hold this thin light shape, I shaded in the shadow all around it. If you had trouble with this, you could always just shade right over that line of light and come back with your detail eraser and omit the shape. As I said, one of the aspects of this medium I like the most is that you have an enormous amount of control. I'll bring in this shadow on the left next. Look for the shapes in here. This doesn't connect. There's an open area in between them. And notice these values are almost the same. You could even shade right through this area, right on top of what you've already done, and get an even tone if you wanted to. I want to make sure I maintain that difference in values. Those separations are going to make this nose have volume. If the values look the same, it will start to appear flat. Again, I'm using a light charcoal here and an extended underhand grip to give me maximum pressure and motion control. No need to work too hard on softening the edge of this shading. I'll use a blending tool to create the vignette. Let your tools do the hard work for you. Okay, this video is getting too long, so I've broken it up into two parts. So please jump to the next video, Drawing Noses Part 2, for the second half of the exercise, where I'll finish walking you through the shading stages.